Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Luftrausers. I hope that that pronunciation is correct given my rudimentary knowledge of German language and also Nina's 99 Luft Balloons. I know I'm late to the party on this one and everybody, everybody already knows that Luftrausers is this awesome kind of retro inspired aviation score attacking arcade type game. But I have an excuse, I was away at GDC all this week and uh, Luftrausers came out like the Tuesday that I left. And, uh, that also explains why my voice is a little bit messed up, but I wanted to talk about Luftrausers anyway, just on the off chance you had not heard about it, uh, because this game is really freaking cool, and also is something that I think a lot of people will definitely be into. I covered this, uh, originally. I mean, I've been aware of Luftrausers, and I, a lot of people have been aware of, uh, of Luftrausers for a long, long time. It took three years, apparently, apparently, for, uh, development to totally finish on this, and I played it at PAX East 2013, but I was aware of it at that point, too. And I, I do want to kind of start this by saying that I was one of those people that, you know, being pretty ignorant of actual like game development practices every time I saw it I was like this looks pretty good like this looks like it must be coming out in like a couple of months right and they're like ah, oh, well we don't really know and then yeah like a year year and a half later here we are and the game has finally come out but I also heard that it reached profitability within three days after its release which is also super cool because it totally deserves it so this is a game developed by a uh, flambear same guys who did nuclear throne the same guys who did super crate box and it has oh that was the worst death of all time I didn't even get to finish my, my preamble um it has that typical kind of flambear uh like satisfaction or joy of just like moving around and this is something that uh, it, it was talked about a little bit when it came to nuclear throne and just how like good things feel when you're just locomoting in the environment but I've seen it talked a lot uh, about with respect to Luftrausers as well. In particular, I haven't seen Total Biscuit's uh, WTF is of uh, Luftrausers yet, but I, I saw a quote from it and it was like, it's not the buttons you press that are satisfying in Luftrausers, it's the buttons you don't press. And that's definitely true, because you're, you're flying this plane, um, and you know, it, it's a, a very quick moving jet, let's put it that way. You can uh, thrust in basically any direction, please don't take that quote out of context, but also um, when you're just like free falling through the environment, sometimes that is actually a viable strategy to avoid bullets as you can see right there, or get a better uh, bead on your enemies. Uh, so this is really, I mean, when you talk about uh, like the joy of the motion in Vlambear games, this one maybe nails it more than, than any other game out there, and a lot of the different kind of, oh, uh, airplane and, and weapon types that we're gonna get here are gonna augment this motion as well. I'm playing on the 360 controller. Uh, I have played a little bit of, uh, of loop trousers in various states on the uh, the keyboard. Works totally fine. For me, I prefer having like a 360 degree uh, rotation with the analog stick because it, I mean, it doesn't really make a big difference. You can play with the D-pad just for whatever reason. It kind of evokes that arcade vibe a little bit more, I think, when you play it with the, uh, the 360 controller. But what's our goal here? So, um, it's an arcade game, basically. It's, it's a throwback, to some extent, to uh, arcade games from, like, the, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, and, well, I guess they didn't really make them too much in the 2000s, but uh, our goal is basically just to get the highest score we possibly can. So we're playing as this plane here. All we can really do is fly or shoot. We can also kill enemies by crashing into them, but this usually causes us to take damage. Killing one enemy gives you a, uh, a certain amount of points based on, basically, the caliber of the enemy. You know, fighters give you uh, 45 points, or I, actually, I think they might give you more consecutively as you kill them, but um, I think this is due to the multiplier as well. So basically the big points that you're going to get are going to be from chaining kills together and as in, you know, like a rhythm game or other arcade games, uh, that combo meter up in the top right or that multiplier uh, will build up to a maximum of 20 and then it will uh, fade away. So if we don't kill anything and get score, um, as it is starting to to fade away there, we're gonna panic a little bit, and then as we finish panicking, the score multiplier is gone, and that's gonna really impact us in a negative ways. And uh, more and more difficult enemies spawn throughout the game, uh, making it uh, an increasingly difficult kind of affair. We take damage, we run into enemies, of course, and we take damage, we go underwater as well, except with a, a very special plane type. And there was one more thing I wanted to mention, which is the way that this game handles health, and uh, particularly the way of kind of like letting the player know what your health is, is really kind of novel and unique. We'll just launch one more here before we start messing around with different plane variants because there are a, a number of kind of like modular ways to change the way our planes are with respect to their like locomotion, armor, and weaponry. But um, yeah, the, the way that uh, the game tells you your health is low is not via like a health bar or anything like that. Um, simply there's like a circle around the outside of your plane which you can see there. Well, you would have seen if I didn't die immediately. Um, but there's a circle around the outside of your plane and as you get more and more damage that kind of closes in on you, makes you feel a little bit more claustrophobic about the way things are going. And uh, the way that you heal is just by not shooting. So as long as you don't shoot for a period of time, um, let's try to get ourselves damaged so you can see the circle. We can do that pretty easily with this ship just by going underwater and then I don't shoot for a while and uh, eventually it'll play a tone basically letting us know we're okay as of course the circle grows wider and wider. So yes, our goal pretty much 
just get the highest score possible. And I really kind of respect uh, Luftrausers and, and consider it... A, a lot of people, like, look at it and they say, like, oh, that looks really uh, simple. That looks really kind of derivative of, like, old arcade games. But in terms of, like, score attacky type arcade games, I feel like every, almost every single one that I play now is just like, oh, we, like, redid Defender with new graphics. Or, oh, we, like, redid Gradius with new graphics. This is, like, a totally new formula, which I think is kind of cool. In any case, or either that or I'm ignorant of what it's based on. Uh, one of the other cool things about the game is that... Um, in ignoring the visual style, which I do want to talk about, but I, I think is very good, and the music, which is great as well, uh, is the kind of like modular nature in which you can change your ship on the fly. So this gives you a huge number of permutations, and each one of them uh, plays very differently uh, on like an overall like ship perspective, if that makes any sense at all. So we can change our weaponry, we can change our armor, and we can change our engine basically. So uh, for uh, Weapon, I haven't actually unlocked everything, but there's a machine gun, there's a laser, there's uh, basically a shotgun archetype, or like a spread gun. There's Maverick, which is a missile launcher, which I really like because you don't have to aim as much, which is really helpful for me in keeping my combo going. For your body, you can have like the original, which is obviously just balanced. Uh, then extra armor, but it's slower. Then uh, no impact damage, but you have less health. What this means is that when you like go through enemies, you don't get damaged by actually running into them or colliding with them, but if you get shot by a bullet, a bullet it does more damage because you have less health overall. And also, um, Vengeance, or Nuke, I guess. Uh, vengeance is the name of the overall plane type here, but uh, Nuke means you explode on death and you have more impact damage. Uh, so it doesn't really help you by, like, augmenting your stats, but it, um, it gives you an extra, like, little bonus. If you die when you're at, like, times 20 multiplier, then it clears everything out on the screen to give you, like, one last little, like, last-ditch uh, boost of points. Now, for engines, um, I'm gonna go with... I haven't really unlocked any that are too unique yet, except for the Gungeon. So, I'm gonna go with the Gungeon. And basically, what this allows you to do is propel using bullets. So, what's kind of cool as well is that not only do all these planes play uh, very differently. You can see that now I'm firing missile launchers and, you know, when I die, my body will explode. And that'll be pretty much the way that I want to go in real life, too. Uh, but each one has its own kind of unique name as well, which kind of uh, is is neat, because there are obviously like a ton of different permutations in the game. That didn't go so well for me, but at least you saw uh, what the nuke can actually do for you. I got 90 points that time. I'm not very good at this game, despite having played a, a decent amount of it, again, in various states over the past, uh, yeah, I guess like seven months or so, eight months or so. Has it really been eight months since PAX Prime? That's kind of crazy to me, but anyway. Um, Answer, no, it's been seven months, but anyway, anyway, um, yeah, you'd think I'd maybe be a little bit better at the game than I actually am, uh, but I'm not, and I, I look forward to seeing some kind of crazy runs, because typically I don't survive for very long. The way you unlock new weapons, by the way, is completing, like, missions in the game, and by completing these missions, they allow you to, um, un unlock new stuff, basically. Uh, I haven't quite unlocked everything, but I'm, oh, that's real bad, but I am pretty close. I must admit that, uh, I don't really do well, uh, with kind of, like, super augmented planes. I'm gonna- oh, I didn't mean to launch there. I do have some problems with the controls sometimes. They're almost a little bit too simplistic, uh, because I constantly find myself, like, accidentally launching just by hitting the up, uh, or up on the analog stick, I should say. I should mention, by the way, or by the well, that the game is, uh, available on Vita, which is where I've probably spent most of my time with it so far, and I enjoy it a lot on Vita as kind of just, like, a game that you can, uh, play on the go. But even after all the time that I've invested in, uh, Luftrauser so far, and, you know, that should go without saying that I, I definitely recommend the game as a result of that. Uh, I, I'm still finding, like, permutations that I haven't used yet, which is really cool. Not just because I haven't unlocked new weapons, but, yeah, I guess I've never used um, armor and super boost and uh, shotgun before. But I have high hopes for this. I, I like taking a, a lot of armor because I'm really bad at not getting hit. I like to play a little bit more aggressively. And again, if we're talking about, like, that trademark Vlambeer kind of, like, uh, joy of just movement. Uh, the shotgun is really cool because it gives you a little bit of kickback, which almost allows you to tread water a little bit. Obviously not literally because we're in the air here, at least for the most part. Um, but yeah, we can slow our descent just by shooting downwards. So if you're trying to take out ships, I think that a build like this is really effective. Alright, I have not done very well from a score standpoint now. You can almost play this a little bit uh, Geometry Wars-esque if you were ever good at that game, which I was not necessarily, but I did develop a strategy after a while, um, of basically kiting a, a bunch of, like, smaller enemies around you to build your combo, and then, uh, going after the big boys. So I don't really want to fight a battleship when I have, you know, four multiplier and zero, uh, well, I, I was gonna say zero score, but I don't really have zero score, but I'd rather kill a battleship, if possible, when I have a multiplier of 20, but first things first, we just gotta survive. Alright, that was pretty bad as well. My, my top score in, like, my Luftrauser's career is, like, 14,000. I don't know if that's that's okay or like absolutely embarrassing, uh, but typically those come from like 
starting a run by almost exclusively dealing with fighters, uh, like these ones that are around me right now. This seems like a perfect way to build up at least a little bit of combo here. Uh, and then getting to like 8,000 and then just surviving as long as I can. But there are like pseudo boss fights or like, you know, tougher, tougher mobs that will appear uh, as we get a little bit further along. The other reason that I really like using the, the high armor, oh good, we did keep our combo going there. The other reason I like using the high armor uh, body is because it actually uh, allows me to be a bit more aggressive with running into enemies, or at least a bit less uh, punished from hitting enemies, uh, which is great. I mean, there are builds, as we saw, that actually allow you to just take no damage from running into enemies, but they don't come with that extra bonus of having like extra armor. So there's, there's a give and take for all those. That's going to hurt a great deal. Very nearly died there. And of course, part of the joy of, of uh, the strategy and, and the tactics in Luftrausers is figuring out how to balance, uh, you know, the fact that you want to be aggressive, but the more aggressive you are, at least with your shooting, the, the less opportunities you have for healing. So, uh, yeah, I really can't say enough good things about it. The one thing that people are going to complain about, and I know it because I've already seen people complaining about it, is that, you know, visually, at least on the surface, it looks like kind of a simplistic game and they're charging $10 and some people have uh, this mental construct that $10 is like a premium price point for a video game or for an indie game at least. Um, I would advise you get, to get over it. You will have uh, a lot more fun with Luftrausers at $10 than you will with a lot of games that uh, on the surface look nicer. Uh, but don't necessarily have the same kind of strategic depth to them. That is to say, if you're into, like, score attacking type stuff, if you're exclusively into, like, narrative focus games, and you really need a good story to keep you engaged, obviously something like Luftrausers is probably a little bit of a tougher sell, uh, but for anybody who can get into the uh, score attacky games, you know, Super Crate Box being such a good example, because it was also developed by the same people and has a lot of the same uh, strengths to it, uh, then uh, I think Luftrausers is an easy sell. But in any case, Let's get down to brass tacks here and start actually like trying to kill some things because I've been alive for quite some time here, but I haven't really done a very good job of actually getting any points. So I, I've uh, taken the good armor, which I've mentioned a, a couple of times before, but I also took the super booster, which kind of offsets the fact that I'm slower by making it faster when I turn. But we're oh, we came very near to death and then we died. I kind of like that build, but I didn't get as many fighters as I wanted to there. Uh, by the way, on the underside of this right now, you can see the missions that we have. So kill five enemies boosting non-stop, kill five enemy types in one game, that seems reasonable. Or encounter a blimp, hopefully we get to see that. But first, uh, let's take out, I really don't like the laser to be honest with you. I think I'm just going to go back to the original weapon. Uh, I really like high armor, but why don't we try a different playstyle here and we'll go for... Um, the propeller, and what the propeller actually allows you to do, or the engine's called underwater, I guess, but what this allows you to do is actually basically treat your boat, or sorry, your plane a little bit like a submarine, so you can go underwater without taking damage, and it's, you know, with varying degrees of success uh, that you can do this, but it is really useful when it comes to actually, like, getting out of the way of, of enemy planes and also taking out enemy boats. It gives you a bit of a better uh, kind of line of sight on them, I guess, as opposed to just, like, hovering on top of them and trying to shoot downwards or shooting, like, downwards at an angle. I think it's a little bit more effective to kind of get get down in their face. And it also means that you can be a little bit more evasive by going into the water, which is nice. I do apologize for my uh, my voice, by the way. It just happens every convention. You're shaking hands and sharing controllers with people from all over the world and people with various, you know, sicknesses of their own. It just happens that I know I sound gross right now, but I wanted to record videos anyway, and I hope it's not too off-putting for you. I've been trying to avoid, you know, Hork and Alugi all over my monitor. I think we're going to make it, but, uh, you know, caveat viewer, I guess. Um, this score is already, like, nearly as good as our... Oh, God! Uh, already nearly as good as our last one. And I'm hoping that we can continue that, but uh, maybe we can take out a battleship here and I'll feel really good about myself. Uh, but also, the, please, like, fighter jets, crash into me a little bit more so I can build this meter so the battleship will actually be worth more points when I do die. Oh, oh never mind. I actually do... My, my preferred build would probably be, like, um, normal high armor, and then the Gungeon, and the reason I like the Gungeon instead of, like, Propeller, although I think Propeller, or Underwater, I should say, is kind of interesting. Uh, oh, that's two battleships! Oh, God! Um, the reason I, I like the Gungeon is because when you're kind of, like, getting away from enemies by, by locomoting, you can still shoot them and, and build combo, which is important, or keep your combo going. Building combo, important, yes, but uh, maintaining combo, also important as well. I guess that's one and the same, uh, considering every enemy you kill does build it. So, these battleships are taking freaking forever, but at least, um, there we go. Five enemy types dead in one game, and we completed another mission. And now we're getting introduced to some of the uh, tougher enemies as well. These other, I don't even know what to call them, 
douche rousers who come around here and uh, really shoot like some serious firepower at you and as you can see pretty much ruined me right there but hey there we go insane damage but low rate of fire and we got a new weapon mode which I honestly have no idea what that is so let's check that out and learn as we go shall we um, oh it gives you a random that's kinda cool but I uh, I kinda prefer just checking out what we've got in our oh was that just the original I can't see what's at the end there, but it scares me, because it's like a skull. But anyway, um, yeah, let's go with the cannon here. Actually, you know what? Um, I kind of want to let myself die. I guess I could just restart. Probably. Somehow. I could just, like, fly up into the tree tops and, tree tops and get myself killed. So, I doubt I'll really like the cannon, because it means you have to aim. And that's not really a strong suit of mine, so I'm just going to fly myself into the, uh, the canopy of the clouds here. Hopefully, to keep, get myself killed, which is why I'm, like, shooting a lot as well. Uh, because I want to go with the Gungeon instead, so at least I have, like, some firepower out of the back of my, uh... The, oh, there we go with the controls kind of freaking me out again, but... Um... Yeah, so we at least get some, uh... Some bullets and some firepower out of the back of our engine as well. So this means that as I, like, fly up here, uh, I should still be able to, uh, get combo from the enemies that are coming up behind me, which can be useful but I'll admit and say that I really have no idea how this is going to go. Do the enemies that get hit with the cannon explode in shrapnel? Because that would really help me out quite a lot when it comes to actually killing multiple enemies at the same time. Otherwise, if I miss one, that kind of seems to be the end. But it does seem like, uh, like they do create some shrapnel, and also, like, it just destroys a boat if it hits it, which seems like a really good way to actually build a huge score. Uh, so I'm going to try that out again, even though that didn't go so well. I think it bodes well for the future, so let's just try to keep ourselves at, like, standard, uh, you know, escape velocity here, sorry, the orbital velocity here. There we go. That shrapnel seems useful. I still have high armor, too, which I think is working out in my favor. And I should really, I'd like, as soon as I get meter, like, starting to build, oh, I lost combo there just barely. Uh, I think I should go for boats, because, uh, you know, killing a boat at standard, uh, like, multiplier is like 40 points, but if we can get it to like plus 10, that would be hugely uh, important for getting a, a high-ish score. That's probably gonna kill me. Oh, it got very close. Please save me. Please save me. Okay, we kept the meter going, but then I messed up uh, the cannon shot. Oh god, I sound like Kermit the Frog now. That's okay, he's, he's doing good work now, he's lucrative. Kermit's back in. That is the title of the next Muppets movie, but don't tell anybody I told you. Alright, actually hit with a cannon shot, that would be amazing. I'm having trouble, like, fighting time to heal. Because I'm just constantly running into- and ah, that's gonna be bad. You know what? I'll tell you what, we're gonna do one more. I kinda like this build, even though, again, it hasn't worked out fantastically for me so far. But considering this is a let's look at, uh, without, you know, burying the lead too far in, I will say that, uh, Loof Drowsers gets a, a very hearty recommendation for me. If you're the kind of person that's into, uh, arcade games, maybe you like playing, uh, Super Crate Box, maybe you like playing, oh my god, one more, I swear. Maybe you like playing like that puppy game stuff, like uh, Revenge of the Titans and um, Titan Attacks, and I forget the name of the other ones, like the 30 like arcade-inspired games that they came out with. It seems like a really original uh, arcade game concept, let's put it that way. Um, and you don't get a lot of those anymore, a lot of them, you know, like, no, no shit-talking here for, like, Aqua Kitty Milk Mine Defender, but, you know, a lot of the arcade games that come out are like, we're retro-inspired, but really it's just kind of like we took the exact idea for of an old retro game and um, you know changed the graphics basically and made it look cooler which is fine in and of itself this is clearly not working out for me um, which is fine in and of itself but at the same time like it's cool to have an original concept as well okay let's take um let's take no impact damage and also Forget the Gungeon, we need like some extra speed, so we'll go with the, uh, the Super Boost. This is the Staff Pick, apparently. Holy crap. Uh, this thing is fast, and it also looks like a sweet axe, so it gets an extra couple of points for that, I would say. Alright, so, let's just start building some combo here. I actually feel substantially more, uh, substantially more maneuverable right now, which is nice for a change. And if I could actually uh, encounter some enemies, that would be amazing as well. I don't know what actually accounts for the enemy spawning. It seems like sometimes uh, I end up having a lot of fighters on me. It seems like sometimes I end up having basically zero, which can be a bit of a frustration as fighters are, like, doubtlessly the best thing to build your meter off of. We should be able to get some decent shots in here. 
Did I kill a boat? I did not kill a Oh, that was scary and stupid. That shot landed, though, so I did manage to keep my multiplier going. Let's try it. Well, I missed that one, and that's going to completely ruin my combo. I think I need, like, way more practice to be able to actually use this effectively. But if you could use this build effectively, I actually think it would be pretty useful. But, you know, what do I know as someone who is clearly getting my shit rocked? I should just stick to the basics. But in any case, this is Loof Drowsers. Check it out on Steam. Uh, there will be a link in the video description below. It's 10 bucks. I really like it. And if you're the kind of person who likes score attacking games, I think you'll like it as well. But in any case, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.